Hello and welcome to lesson 13 of the learning guitar series. This time we've basically finished with the shapes and this week we discuss the G shape as it's derived from this open chord that we all know, I guess. In just that this time we'll look at it as the usual imaginary ballet and we're gonna transpose it around. So for example, this would be a C major because this root note is C. So your root note is on the first string. Before we delve into it, I thought of addressing like a question that somebody left on uh, as a comment on YouTube, and I thought it was Ang Mai Tan. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And he was wondering if, when practicing uh, <coughs> intervals, so when practicing scales, in intervals of seconds, third, fourths, fifths, you know. Uh, what we do basically on this with these particular shapes. Um, if you should think of them as a sequence of intervals, so for example, let's take this new shape, okay? And uh, the, the scale that goes with that here is your root note, it will go like this. So that's the shape we're, 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 we're learning this week. <coughs> And here is my root note. This would go 6 major 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 major 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 major 7, and another root note. Okay, so you got three of them. Um, so, in running these scales uh, and, uh, as intervals, uh, in intervals, should he think of in terms of the actual intervals? So, should he think in his head? Six, one, seven, two, one, three, two, four, and so forth and so on. Or should he think of it in terms of the actual note is blank? So should he think in terms of A, C, B, D, C, E, D, F, and so forth and so on. And I was pointing out that obviously, and I kind of agree with that view, uh, doing it with the name of the notes might actually be it's somehow a little bit harder but in the long term more um, you know more beneficial and so i was thinking about that and my my point of view actually i think and it's a point of view it's just an opinion so at the end of the day i mean it's, i know it's a stereotype to say do what's more comfortable for you you know in a way you're trying to learn something so you know I think those results, learning the intervals you're playing and learning the notes on the on the neck, which is you know very important, I cannot stress that enough, uh, can be done anyway outside of these exercises. What I mean is, I would not do any of those. So I would not practice it by telling myself that's a six to one, and that's a seven to two, and I would not think A, C, uh, B, D, etc. Here is the logic of why I think that. Um, in terms of intervals, uh, all the scales we start we started. Let's take for example the very first shape we started, which was the shape of E. Okay, I'm doing it in the key of A major. Okay. Well, now this particular shape, and in this case, just pay attention to the fingering. So like this would be, say, this is one, two, three, and four. This would be one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two, four, one, two, four. When we started the other scales in the major modes, so when we will do Dorian, which is a minor scale, when we do Mixolydian, which is a dominant scale, or Phrygian, Lohian, and so forth, the actual shapes will not change. That's the comfortable thing about the cage system. What I mean is this, we can call this A Ionian. And when we studied, say, B Dorian, B Dorian still looks like this. Okay? The only difference that in A Ionian, this is the root note. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven root note. And when we do Dorian, that's one. And now this is two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven. So when studying interval studies, I'd rather think of it like seconds and thirds and fourths, the actual interval, as n and not the number of the interval. What I mean is, this is an interval of thirds, right? No matter which mode am I, 
if in Ionian, in Dorian, let's stay as an interval of thirds, because that's a minor third, that's a major third, that's a minor third, that's a minor third, major third, major third. And that doesn't change. Same thing for fourths. That's fourths. Actually, let's use the new scale, okay? This is a shape of G, right? So that's fourths, right? Interval of fourths. No matter if I'm seeing this as an Ionian, if I'm seeing this as a D Dorian, if I'm seeing it as an E Phrygian, uh, F Lydian, G Mixo Lydian, A Aeolian, and you know, uh, F sharp um, Lokian. The intervals. That's still a fourth interval. Okay. So I tend to study the interval. I mean, again, my opinion, uh, not in relation to the intervals of the scale. I hope I'm making myself clear there. So I'm not thinking of it as six, seven, one. Of course, when I'm practicing the scale itself as an Ionian, I'm having a, a, an eye on the root note. Because the, the root note, what I design is the root note, is actually designing the name of the scale I'm playing. So in this case, we're still doing uh, Ionian. And the reason I said at the beginning, like, the tough part of the practice is this one, because you're standing on, like, you know, intervals and all the triads contained in each shape. But those studies will be common will stay there, you know, you don't have to do more when we're going to do Dorian uh, um, and other modes. The only thing you'll have to rethink where your root note is, and hence that will change the numbers of the scale. So a Ionian scale will always be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. A Dorian will always be 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, flat 7. A Phrygian will always be 1, flat 2, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 6, flat 7. So, but the shapes themselves will not change. So that's why I would not do it by interval. Now let's look, so I would not think in terms of six, one, seven, two, okay? Because the one is gonna move. Now let's address why I would not do it for these exercises with the name of the notes. First of all, because it might slow you down. So what I mean is like, you're trying to build muscle memory, visual memory with this kind of, um, you know, intervals and triads and so forth. So having to think the notes you're playing all the time, you're gonna be incredibly slow. At least I would be. So maybe I'm discussing. Is, is, of course, this is an opinion based on my technical limitation and my um, brain limitation. I don't know how to call them. Uh, intellectual limitation, I guess that would be the word. Um, so does that mean that I think learning the the the, the, the notes on, on on the neck is wrong? No, absolutely not. It's very important. I've done some music reading, in, uh, you know, at the beginning of uh, my, well, at the beginning of my studies, uh, at some point, maybe like 15, 20 years ago. And and so, of course, like, if you do music reading, uh, you will automatically, you will have to learn the name, the, the, the name of the notes. Uh, if you have not done that, and that's why I thought this, this question was interesting, because somehow it, it kind of escaped me in a way. Uh, both the intervals and the notes, you can address them when you're studying arpeggios. And that's why I, start, I do them from the, from the root. Uh, if you look at the studies in lesson two, lesson five, it's all done that way. What I mean is, instead of, you know, learning every single note in the scale, which as I said, is not a bad thing, but when you're practicing arpeggio, say like, um, you know, G major seven, okay, shape of uh, shape of E. I I suggested in lesson one that you actually tell yourself what note you're playing, okay. So that's G A flat A, and I'm talking about the root note, okay. B flat B C C sharp, because of course as you're doing that, not only you're developing muscle memory, but you're starting to have an eye on developing also the name of the notes on the fretboard. And because when we're studying arpeggios, we're actually studying it from root root, which means that at some point you're playing this on the... So this is the shape of A, right? And so now you're studying all the notes on the second string. So C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, uh, uh, E flat, A, and so forth and so on. Same thing when you do the one on the third string, where you're like F, F sharp. So you're kind of learning them, okay? Uh, this week, because of this shape, you're also going to start learning um, arpeggios that start on the fourth string. So you like, I don't know, B flat. Okay, this is B flat major seven. 
uh, B, C, uh, C sharp, D, and so forth and so on. And when you practice arpeggios backwards, well, of course, the first and the last strings are the same, right? So when you practice arpeggios backwards, you're also going to learn the fifth string. Or you can literally learn it in isolation. Decide, okay, that's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then you have all the flats and sharps. So hopefully that these address that kind of question in terms of uh, how I would, uh, that's how I would do it. Um, because anyway, you, you're learning the notes as you go. If you pay attention, you know, when, in particular the root notes, where all the root notes to your pages and to your scales are. Um, and because of their pages and the way they're designed and chords also have the same property, you're also going to start remind, remembering in time where all the other intervals are in relation to the root note. What I mean by that is, as you do this, say for example, you're studying major 7, and you're thinking, okay, G, uh, G sharp, A, at the same time is addressing your first question, because in time you will definitely remember that that's a third, that's a fifth, that's a major 7. And when you do two octaves, 3, 5, major 7. So when I play this note, I automatically see in my head Major 7, 9, 6, 3, 9, 6, that's a 2, that's a flat 7, flat 9, sharp 9, flat 5, sharp 5, minor 3rd, you know, flat 3, uh, sharp 4, sharp 4, so, so that's your sharp 4. So automatically, like from the root note, from you know this root note, I can see all the other intervals, and it's kind of comfortable to be able to see it from the root note because that really relates, especially if you want to play in, in, in improvised music. It really relates uh, perfectly to. Uh, I'm thinking of a chord, but I'm also seeing all the extensions that comes with it. Mm, so in that sense. I don't think of when studying, say, these are interval of thirds, right? I'm not really thinking 6, 1, 7, uh, 2, 1, 3. I'm just thinking the interval, those are thirds, those are fourths, those are fifths, sixths, sevenths, Seventh and octaves, because that's gonna, those are, those kind of intervals are going to be in common to all the modes. Okay, so I hope this answered the question. But I, I thought it was a very good question. So, and I think, as I said, learning the notes on the guitar is important, and actually learning the intervals too. It's just that I tend to see them from the root, and I kind of developed them. My, my, my photographic memory of them and muscle memory of them kind of developed mainly from the study of our pages mainly and of course by you know by seeing the chords i tend to look at these studies more as uh, the basis for some degree of muscle memory or interphalic studies those are interphalic studies and when uh, after when we complete the the the, 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 the g shape series so like this lesson about the scale and then the arpeggios and then the chord before moving on to dorian for because i guess that's going to be the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to have a lesson on theory and because so far I also asked you to uh, practice triads, right? And four note chords, right? And, you know, uh, and that needs an explanation at some point. Like, okay, why that sequence of triads? Again, it's good that you study them because it's common to those those triads. This is, you know, this is a minor. Uh, as my theory lesson will explain you all this stuff, but that's a minor, the alpha diminution, C, uh, D minor, E minor, F major, G7, A minor, F alpha diminution, uh, G, uh, B alpha diminution, C major, and I think the D minor, E minor, etc. So, like, that will need an explanation. Where is, it, where is that coming from? Okay? So, plus, like, a theory lesson will allow you a little bit of a break in order for you to keep catching up with all the five shapes. Uh, okay. 
kind of a detour, a long detour, but as I say, this was an interesting question and one that uh, it's interesting to discuss. As I say, it's my personal opinion to say it that way. Um, it derives my, from my personal experience and what I thought it was best for me. Uh, of course, I tried different things and turned out this worked for me. You know, but as I say, I have my own technical limitation and I have my own intellectual limitation. So if something else works better for you, you know, I'm not the one saying this is the truth. I, I, I just think that um, in doing all these studies, if you pay attention to where your root notes are as you go up and down the neck, automatically in time you will start remembering even the name of the notes. Of course, if you pay attention to it, okay, if you just don't do this without asking, without telling yourself what key you are in right now, right? But you know, uh, when we look at uh, actually some of the exercises included this week. You see that there is a bunch that will definitely force you uh, to, to, to think what note am I playing, okay? At least what root note am I playing? And in doing that, as I said, you might remember all the notes uh, on the guitar in time. So now let's look at the, what's, what's in the, this lesson kind of PDF. I have it in front of me, download it if you can have it on the side. I mean, the first eight pages, as usual, dedicated to intervallic studies, triads, uh, extended triads, and a couple of grouping uh, types, group of three, group of four. This is the chord we're dealing with this week, this chord shape. In this case, it's C major, this would be D major, this would be F major, it looks like a G major, and we're just transposing it. Is this a comfortable chord? I mean, you, no one that I use very often itself, but there is a lot of interesting chords, as you can see, deriving from this particular shape, when we, when we look at it in two lessons from now. The scale, you can... I, I, I do it both ways, I can do it like using three fingers here, so tend to do it like this. It then, as I mentioned before, these are considerations that I'll leave to you in a way. And of course, you have all the intervallic studies, so you know I, I will not, you know, I'll go through all that. I'd rather discuss in a way what's not in the PDF. Um, but good news, now this connects all your fretboard. And what I mean by that is, uh, in terms of uh, the cage system, and you see the seven notes per string system, you get it all. What I mean is, so in the key of G, now we're going to play G, this shape is up here, okay? This, this chord, okay? So, and at the moment I'm, I'm ignoring kind of empty strings, but, so that's the first shape we learned, that was the second one, so the shape of D, you have the shape of C. These are all. I'm still in the key of G, right? That's the uh, shape of A. Now we're adding the shape of G. And now we're back, obviously, 12 frets away. We're back to the first one. And now the entire neck, we can play the entire neck. Okay, which is already a fantastic achievement. Same thing, we are completing the three notes per string. So that was your first one, that's your second one, that's your third one, fourth one. type of status you can do and you'll, you'll find the first in page 9. 
and which is actually kind of an important one. And he's basically practicing all these forms. Uh, in this case, I broke it for the cage system, and you can always write it for the three node strings if you want. In a, a chord sequence, which is an interval of fourths. Um, in other words, we're starting from G, G major, and we're going to play the scale, G Ionian, right? A fourth from G is C, so we're going to play C, Ionian. A fourth from C is F, so we're going to play F, Ionian. A fourth from F is B flat, so we're going to play B flat, Ionian. As you can see, in doing this, I'm actually practicing all the shapes. A, f uh, a fourth from B flat is E flat, and that's E flat Ionian. From E flat is A flat. From A flat is D flat to C sharp. Then it's F sharp. Then it's B. started in G, we are back in G, and this time, because of the nature of the exercise, we find ourselves in the second cage, let's call it that way. First time we played G, it was this way, now we're playing G, and it's this way. So, again, we're going up in fours, so that's G, C, F, B flat. And I suggest basically like you're gonna go all the way up the neck, alternating these five shapes in order to play this progression. I wrote the progression on the PDF anyway, and several parts of this exercise uh, for you to catch up. I know that I'm going rather fast right now, but basically your sequence is uh, G, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, C sharp or D flat, F sharp, B, E, A, D, and you're back to C. And it's called the cycle of fourths. It's comfortable as a progression, as would be the cycle of fifths, which would be you know the uh, the inversion of this, um, because it allows you to do any exercise and involving all the twelve keys. Okay, that's why it's kind of calm to study things in interval of fourths. Um, now that we have also all the five shapes, one consideration in terms of summing them up. So if I think of a root note on the first string of the guitar, okay? And that's how I kind of remember, say, when I'm doing this exercise, for example, I'm thinking G, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat. I'm trying to think, you know, like, what's the next scale that I have to play? Oops. What's, what's the next scale that I have to play? Sorry for that. I'm, in my head, I'm visualizing the root notes, okay? And so, when you think on the first string, there are two shapes that derive from it. So if I think, okay, A major, I can have this shape, so the shape of G. That's what I'm seeing in my head. Or I can have this shape, the shape of B. Okay? So from this root note, you always have two shapes. Okay? The one of G, the one of E. I don't know. D. Okay. Simple enough, I think. If you think of a root note on the second string, you also have two shapes deriving from it. So, uh, let's say D major, you're gonna have the shape of A and shape on C. So when I think of a root note on the second string and we're thinking of Ionian, 
passion for any 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 mode as a matter of fact there is always two shapes driving from it you know one or two is left one two is right i know it sounds kind of uh, simplifying it but if i think of e i got one shape going this way one shape going this way okay that's my shape c shape a. and of course to the shape i associate the scale um, on the third string, we have one shape, which is the shape of D. So, if you think of this, like the one. If I think on the other side, actually, I'm thinking of the second act of this shape, as a matter of fact. So. so, as you practice the five shapes, as I said, especially when we do the arpeggios, learn the notes, okay? especially the root notes. So this first exercise actually allows you to, to basically practice all the shapes in a sequence that allows you to start here and end here. Uh, I'll just briefly do it quickly again. So this is G, C. So if you think of it in terms of chords, that's the progression you're playing actually. G, C, F, B flat, E flat, See how is it going? It's going up. F, B flat, E flat, A flat, C sharp, F sharp, B, and, and it keeps going up. And as you play this as a sequence of a scale sequence, you're practicing all the five shapes. The next exercise is that is designed rather than uh, practice the vertical transition of, uh, in between all the keys. So you're practicing five shapes and all twelve keys, okay, all across the neck of the guitar. The next exercise is, instead is designed for you to practice as a single key all across the neck. So, as we know, a lot of pop songs, sometimes rock songs, the, the entire song might be uh, resolving in one key, which means that's that's the only scale you probably you possibly need to 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 solo on top of it. So again, in the PDF I designed it, I wrote it in the key of G, but I strongly suggest you change key. Uh, so you don't, you, from a, a visualizing point of view, you don't get stuck with that. So, to give the good example, <laughs> uh, let's say this week we're gonna start from C sharp, okay? So that's the third shape we learned, and we know that the scale that goes with this is this. That's C sharp. That's my next C sharp. Okay. That's my next C sharp, shape of G, that we're doing today. That's my next C sharp. That's in the shape of E. That's my next C sharp. As you can see, the sequence is always the same. So, if we think of this as a shape of one, two, three, four, and five, which I don't do by the way, but let's think of it from that point of view. If something starts from the shape three, then after shape, like in this case, after shape three, there is shape four. After shape four, there is shape five. After shape five, you're back to one. One, two, three, four, five. So if I was practicing this, in the exercise, what you'll have is basically going up and down each shape and connect them, right? Repeating some shapes because you have, uh, you have the entire neck of the guitar. Why not? This might be too dry for me, but no. Okay. I don't like the sound of the guitar up there or something. Else. Maybe, you know. um, so the second exercise basically is the connections. Okay. And as I said, one day maybe you do G, up, down. 
um, another day you want to do Z sharp. Uh, now, um, keep changing your first shape. So maybe like tomorrow you start with something that starts with the shape of D. In this case, it would be E major. E major, E major, E major, E major, E major, e major and you're back to the floor. And you do like here. Then you something that starts with this, with the C shape. Then something that starts uh, with an A shape. Then something that starts with the G shape or with the E shape. Uh, if you continue on the PDF, then at some point there is page 12, and it basically is adding the last two, uh, three notes per strings. Again, change key on a daily basis, that's a good thing to do. The sequence, the seven shapes, stays the same, obviously. Um, in this case, G. Playing with the metronome, you, you'll notice the difference. In this case, in my head, I'm actually thinking it as triplets. So I'm actually thinking one, two, three, 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 one, when it comes to three notes per strings, you know in previous PDFs, previous lessons, I also gave you some examples of pattern. Because one, one thing that is very comfortable about the three notes per string system is the fact that you can um, easily design pattern, patterns, pattern playing that you can move across, across the neck. Which I think is one of the big advantages of uh, three notes per string and of course the, the consistency of the right hand picking pattern. You know, independently if you do it legato or ultimate picking or sweet picking, economy picking, whatever you want to call it. So that's comfortable. Uh, in this case, I thought, you know what, by now you have all the shapes. Start designing your own patterns. Why not? Have a, have a go at that. So, like, of course, if this is the first time you see any of my lessons, probably you want to start from, you know, from earlier on. And to be honest with you, I, I still to this day, I struggle to call them lessons. To me, it's more like a discussion, and, and, you know. These are, it's the basic grammar of the guitar, it's not that I'm, I'm discussing uh, something revolutionary here. Now, last thing, like in this case, uh, there is an exercise in page 13, which is new. What I mean is, I added also an exercise that I think it, you, it would be beneficial for you. And again, we go back in terms of you learning the notes of things, learning the notes and uh, where things are. And this exercise is basically practicing the scales, the Ionian scale. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, from the root. So instead of from instead of using the cage system, instead of using this, if I'm thinking G major, I'm thinking this. Okay. And performed in intervals of fourths. So what this will do, which is basically what you're going to do with your pages, because your pages were already studying them from the root. So this is just an add-on, but you've studied this. Now you're studying this. Okay, so you can mix and match from the root. Um, because that's going to kind of teach you all the, all the root notes where they are, okay? And it kind of goes like this, I'll, I'll show it to you, so it's kind of easier. So you have uh, G, C, that's C major, F, B flat, D flat, A flat, D flat, F sharp, and just keeps going. This time you're playing major scales, uh, Ionian scale from the root. 
you can expand this in time if you want. As now I'm playing it uh, ascending and descending, it kind of makes it easier at the beginning. You could just play all of this just ascending. So, C, F, E flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, F sharp, E, E, A, D, G. you can do it backwards which makes it a little bit more awkward uh, sorry the scale I was going with that pages G C F E flat E flat uh, A flat sorry I'm um, <laughs> right there uh, D flat F sharp And you could do, you know, you can look at it from any angle you possibly want. You can even think I'm going to practice, I'm going to practice all my intervals uh, to this. Although I would possibly do it if I was you to the cage system. So say for example, and I'm looking ahead, a lot ahead now. You're starting in fourths of the cage system, right? So G and then C and then F, that part. Instead of performing it as a scale, you can try and perform it as an interval. In intervals. So let's say I'm going to practice interval of fourths. So instead of, I can combine all the studies I've done so far into one single exercise. So this would be fourths. Instead of playing the scales up and down, I'm actually going through the same scales but in intervals. You could do this with fifths, you could do it all reversed. You could, any of the exercises you've done in the first eight pages can be applied to that. Uh, and as I said, the, 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 the cycle of fourths is very comfortable because as a chord progression allows you to go through all the keys. You could do that in fifths. Uh, I find fourths um, kind of comfortable. I like it better in terms of the way it resolves musically. One last consideration before we move, uh, move on to some uh, playing-based exercises. Is, as I mentioned before, now that we have completed all the, the five shapes of the cage system and the seven shapes of the three notes per string system, you can see how all the keys, I can by that I mean G, G sharp, A, every key, all the 12 keys in the scale can be developed within a series of frets. That's what we call cages, if you want, on the guitar. And what I mean by that, let's say I'm going to go from F sharp all the way to F sharp, okay? By staying in just one area of the neck. In this case, I'm going to use, say, the first five frets, okay? Six frets. G sharp, G. When it comes to A flat, I could do this, or I could do this. A, B flat, I could do this, or I could do this. B, C, C sharp, I could do this, I could do this, it's the same, D, E flat, I could do this, or I could do this, E, F, and I'm back to F sharp. So everything, so which means if I can do that with the chords, it means that I can do that with the arpeggios and I can do that with the scale. I could do this in, in this area if you want, I mean, so like um, from E to E. That's E, 
uh, sorry, from B to B. That's B. C, C sharp. I could do it this way. D, I could do it this way. I could do it this way. Uh, e flat, I could do this or this. E, F, uh, F sharp. G, A flat or A flat. A, B flat. And I'm going to B or B. So everything can be developed within a few frets which is an important consideration. Now, I'm not advocating that you always play what we call, what we call in position, so no matter what chord progression, you're not really moving on the neck. Don't forget, we have three octaves and an alpha, let's try and use them. But it's important to understand that the moment you find yourself doing this with chords, arpeggios or scales, because you don't know any better, then it's a symptom that you haven't studied the actual cage properly yet, because everything should be under your finger fingertips. And that definitely allows uh, your photographic memory to go into play. So when you see a chord progression and you're improvising or you're, you know, you're designing to write for a particular chord progression, all the chords should be in one area, right? And the reason we move is to exploit the three octaves and half. Now, let's go to playing exercises. Um, from that point of view, I didn't have this week to think uh, of a particular progression because the cycle of fourth progression at that point really comes handy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to loop a cycle of fourths. So I'm going to start from G and play in fourths chords all the way to the next G. And then we're going to play scales over it. I'll show you in a second. Okay, let me, let me, I'm going to use some, maybe not big chords, but one, two, three, four. That's G. Sharp. 
Let's see. F. B flat. G notes for strings. G. Um, sorry, E flat. say like one, one bar per chord you can at the beginning you can stretch this so I have this this progression the G last maybe on four bars and then the Z, that gives you time to think okay but if I have to kind of try and describe what's going on in my brain when I'm going from from a key to another I'm seeing the chord okay I'm seeing where the root node is so I'm seeing the chords and because I'm seeing the chord I'm seeing the scale and I'm seeing the arpeggios at the same time so as I said, these are three sides of the same thing, but um, to me the chord shape uh, kind of informs me of the scale shape and the arpeggios within, and the intervals. So if I'm thinking F this way, I see in my head 7, 1, 3, 5, 7, 1, 3, 5, kind of for example, right? And also the other intervals. So as I said, like uh, like I mentioned um, at the beginning, so we kind of go full circle with this lesson. Um, the arpeggio studies and the scale studies really kind of um, inform me on where the, all the intervals are in terms of uh, the intervals from the root. So if my root is here, three, five, six, nine, another root note, major seven, four, sharp four, and we do lydian, etc. Uh, so hopefully this is going to be a, has been a, like an informative lesson and it's a lot to take on board i think and hopefully also answer the kind of question that uh, you left on um, you left on uh, on youtube last but not least you might also want to do an exercise where you are only practicing a single key as opposed to cycle of fourths in this case let's i don't know let's loop um i don't know a chord okay Okay, 
So if you want to think it from one to five, given what we've done so far, it would be five, one, two, three, four, back to five, one. And again, try and play, okay? So to this, you can always combine also like the, the three notes per string uh, beside the cage system. So in the key of A, you would have this. Uh, this lesson. Uh, I hope you found it informative. Obviously, um, we are closing the circle, which is very interesting because now you have all the neck of the guitar available to you. Uh, although at this stage we're still looking at the, just the Ionian scales so from a major key point of view, but there's a lot of playing that can be done, especially in pop music, just with this. And um, the next lesson is going to focus again on this particular shape. So the shape of G, we're going to look at the arpeggios. And the following one, obviously, is going to look at uh, chords. In the meanwhile, um, I hope you're all safe. Um, as usual, if you have any particular question, feel free to add it in the comments. And I'll do my best to address it. Okay? Thank you so much.